Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I pulled a few things I wanted to show you. Some things that we had seen before and just want to update you on. But it is definitely coming into Neo season. And my little Neo stylus loose Neary has a spike coming. It also had some amazing roots growing. And I was really, really happy because I find that mine is very reluctant to grow a proper root system. So I was really happy to see that and then they stopped. Out of nowhere, probably the hot wind, you can see that the root tips just stopped growing. So now what I'm doing with it is I'm submerging it completely in my Vanda bucket. As deep as the Vanda bucket is with water, I just place it down all the way to the bottom and submerge the whole plant for an hour or so. I don't know if I can recover the roots, get them to start growing again. I mean, you know, they're not dead. They just, well, the tips just went poof and said, nope, too dry. So yeah, that's my little Neo Stylus, but it is in spike, which is great. And so is my Neo Phoenicia here, Falcata going absolutely nuts on the root front, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Let's take your stylus out of the way. Look at all these roots. Ah, oh, they're just gorgeous. And I spray this every day. In the morning, it gets the fertilizer spray. And in the evening, or oh, early afternoon, sorry, early afternoon, it just gets a normal RO water, quick humidity boost spray. And you can see, Hang on a second, let me show you. This is the side facing the sun or facing the warmer part of the patio. And this is the side that's facing the shady part of the patio because it lives in my prime real estate location on the bottom shelf, so it has dappled sun. But this, all these roots are where it's shadier and a little bit cooler. Look at that, even a couple of degrees makes a difference. But then again, look, we have a spike coming one there and I think you may have already spotted the other one I think these are two new fans coming here they don't look like spikes to me but who knows I'll be happy to be proven wrong and in the back here I have another one coming so yeah it did three for me last year and if it's two this year that's fine that's fine considering how what a jump on root growth it has done this year in comparison to last year that's quite amazing I this root is one big one big energy consumer so that's okay it didn't do all this last year so two spikes will be great I'm happy with that we'll make sure that the root isn't suppressing the spike back here because that can easily happen as well that the spike can't get up and around the root yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, I also want to show you my green hopper. If you remember, I said this one's going into full water culture. And I had it in the sun because I wanted to burn out whatever this is. Just scorch it out. And if others get burnt, so be it. And surprisingly, surprisingly, I had to move it away from the sun because the water was getting too warm. Yeah, I thought that maybe jacuzzi temperatures of 37 degrees could be cooking the roots. We didn't quite get there, but when I put my hand in there one time, I thought, no, that's cozy for me. That's not good for you. So it is now going to live or it lives now under the shelf of my prime real estate where I have my summer blooming fowls. I've moved it, but you can see the leaf has deteriorated and it's growing now another leaf and I didn't have any sign of that before the water culture thing or before yeah before water culture there was no sign of a new leaf so there is now sign of a new leaf and we'll keep an eye on that my little fires experiment is doing quite well even though it doesn't look like it let me get it out and I can say that with some level of confidence because this one, I'm not going to pull it out. If things go downhill, I will show you a deteriorated root. But this one, there is sphagnum moss stuck to something fuzzy as well. And that is its root. 
which is super cool. We need some roots to go because you can see how the cut spikes are deteriorating. And that I need to keep that super protected as well. Nice and humid, no drying off. These are terrestrial after all. I'm gonna tuck that back into place, put it in its bag so I don't lose the momentum on this one. I'll be right back. While on the subject of Fios, look at this my new growth one of my new growths the other two are still okay one of my new growths had a little bit of mealy bug on them so i put some alcohol on it and i wasn't i was thinking nothing of it at all because it's windy it's hot but look what it's done these fire sleeves for me in my climate are just so delicate I don't know if this whole growth now is compromised or what it's going to do. This leaf has grown because the damage I could see was up to here and it's still growing a bit. The new leaf in there, my goodness, I don't know. I am so sorry, I feel so bad about this plant. I am very selfish to want to have it, to want to grow it. I love the blooms, but look. There's no reason why these leaves should be deciduous. There's no reason, but they are. In my climate, they are. Which is a shame, but I just wanted to add that in. Uh, it's not all hunky-dory here in my little orchid paradise. Speaking of roots, this is my Ascacentrum ampuyathea, the pink dreamer that we've been following since the early days of my channel because it is one of the ones that wasn't situated in the pot root wise. The color was a dark maroon burgundy, way too much light even though the leaves were sturdy. But look at the roots, we have also resituated it into the pot to let some roots go into the media for more hydration. And since then, <clears throat> no complaints but really. There was one sticking out back here that had was just a stump. And this stump has now extended, which I think is fabulous. But yeah, it's sticking right up into the air and has absolutely no intention at this point to grow down into the media. So, mummification nation. That's how I keep it. <laughs> We have a new root growth coming here. I wonder what direction it's going off to because we the other one right here, which was also a stump, no complaints, it's extending, but yeah, you need to go down. So I'm thinking of actually placing another microfiber in this right here across this one. Maybe encourage this one to go and search down further to the humidity, I don't know. But on top of that, here's another thing. So far, the root that we moved into the pot is still looking great. You can see it's absorbing water. So there's nothing I'm concerned about just yet because I don't see anything that causes me concern. However, this one here was one of the longer ones. It was the initial one that was mummified. It's going brown. And you can see where there was damage. I must have just cracked it very, very slightly, but that was enough to do it damage. Even though I had it wrapped in the microfiber to start with for at least a week, 10 days as it grew. And then I thought it was maneuverable enough. And yes, and that is why when I work with roots, everything is a risk. I feel like everything is a risk. So now I'm just keeping that covered, see if that extends, if I can tease it into the pot. One seems to be doing fine. So can you see, also now we have recovered the color. We have the green back in the leaves. There's a little bit of freckling left, but that's okay. However, and I wondered if I do this, I am so glad she's looking nice and lush and green 
but am I going to get blooms? So that is the experiment. To my recollection, last year this time she was in spike. So we shall see if Ampoyathea Pink Dreamer needs to be that dark burgundy in the leaves in order to bloom, or if she can be like this and have a healthy green lush foliage and can still bloom. That remains to be seen. We shall find out soon enough. And then I just want to show you my Lelia zip here because more action. So I only received this in uh, November of 2019 and it came with these two growths here in growth and as they were transitioning and acclimatizing to their new environment, they grew just a little bit less substantial. You can see that the bulbs are quite all right, but the leaves, they never really developed to their full potential lengthwise. I like that they're a little bit more chubby, but lengthwise. But now I have two more new growths coming. So I'm really pleased about that. And it is completely rooted in from something that I had to have microfiber over the top to protect the top, top layer a little bit, not let these new roots as they were developing desiccate. The whole plant is now pot bound. Two new growths. I'm really happy about that. We saw that, I think, in one of my first Rapiculus Lelia videos, so I just wanted to show that. And I want to show Dendrobium exile from its recent resituation, relocation. I put that on a video as well. And you can see, this is the new growth that I was looking at and saying, why are you not growing pendant? And look at it. I could be completely wrong but it is growing upright it kind of annoys me because I would love to have this one growing pendant on the other hand hey if you're growing upright uh, all the more easier to take care of you you know I'm here in the pot and you can see all the new root growth as well it's fantastic but look at that at a right angle going up as far as I'm concerned, it could have gone just straight across and told me, this is me, I want to be pendant. But no, a 90 degree angle and it's growing upright. So yeah, exile, that's fine. New roots, you do you, that's okay. And then I want to show you my Lime Bay. Because we haven't seen enough of this one, it's been bloom after bloom after bloom. So I brought her outside. It's difficult to film inside as much as it is outside, but it gets a little bit hollow sounding inside. But anyway, so bloom number 11 is starting to appear out of its bract there. The cover of the bud is right here. This is the bud down there. So still going strong. And um, remember, I thought I'm going to repot this one and I still have to one day. And it's not like I can leave it until, well, maybe in this case I can. We'll have to see. I was thinking I needed to repot this by August, September, but if this is the size of the bulb, then this growth will be okay space-wise. It's the roots I'm concerned about. So I'm keeping a close eye on my Sologeny Lime Bay. But needless to say, look at what their new growth is doing. We have another spike. So whatever happens, I find it super interesting because I've always wanted to have a multiple spiked Sologeny Lime Bay. I have no idea how long I can keep this first spike going and then also provide for this second spike. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty plant. There's no way I'm letting this one ever dry out. The reservoir is always full or at least the microfiber is never dry, ever. So I always pick this one up every two or three days, pick it up, give the pot a little bit of a weight judgment with my hand, and I make sure there's always water in there because this one is now guzzling like there's no tomorrow. And while we're on the subject of Sologenes, Kim Paquette, by executive order, bestowed upon me as the owner of this gorgeous Sologeny Pandorata. 
I will herewith announce and officially name her Mint Chocolate. So thank you very much, Kim Parkett. Here we are, subscribers inspire. Officially, this is my Sologeny Pandorata Mint Chocolate. Not approved by any kind of society, not approved at all, but at the end of the day, she's mine. And that's what I'm going to do to honor Kim Paquette's wonderful suggestion because I do love mint chocolate. Ice cream, after eight, I love it. So perfect. Thank you, Kim. How's that for you, cousin it? You doing okay there? Yeah, you had a little bit of a refreshment? Awesome, enjoy the late afternoon sun. Look at all your new growths. Look at that, you look all spiky and untidy. You look like Rod Stewart back in the day. Just to close this off, here's something that made me laugh and I want to share that with you. Look at this. Cousin It is embracing his feminine side and he's got a little bloom. How cute. You know, like when you go out and you have like your summer evening and you've picked a hibiscus or a bloom and you've tucked it behind your ear. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. <laughs> That's fine, I'm not making fun of you. You're cute. You're cute and you can stay. But in all seriousness, look at a little late bloom of Maxillaria variabilis. Thank you everybody so very much for watching from myself and Cousin It. Take care, be safe. Bye.